It almost feels inevitable when you're making games that you're going to have to have some sort of a data strategy, especially once you get into gameplay elements that have maybe the same structure like a card or a spell or a different type of enemy, but then they have different health values or damage values. Or in my game here, cards are a perfect example. All my cards will have different effects and different things going on like that. So I need a, a good way to manage that data. So today, during this video, I'm going to show you how to take a CSV file, export it into JSON. We'll talk about why JSON in a little bit, and then load that into Godot, and finally then parse out that JSON and uh, be able to parse the JSON out, uh, load it in, and go ahead and start pulling that key, those keys out and start creating the data behind your game in a really easy fashion. And I, I'm pretty proud of this method. Uh, it's kind of what works best for me. This is gonna be the backbone, barebone minimum of what you need to know to get it to work. And then you can expand upon it, like adding in error handling or data checking or data validation and start building on top of this solution in a really nice way. So the very first thing you're gonna to need to do is you're going to need to create a, uh, a spreadsheet uh, and I think for this example, Google Sheets will be the way to do it. It's nice, it's free, it's easy. You have versioning control inside of it and you can easily manage things uh, with the spreadsheets to be able to adjust the values. Now, once you get a spreadsheet created, I like to have a bunch of keys on the top that are all caps underscored, almost looking like enum values that I can then easily reference inside my code. So name the columns, each column, that's the, the way that goes down. I think in my head, like the Parthenon had columns, those go down and then rows go across. So name each column with some sort of intelligent name that will make sense to you. Uh, for example, cost favor is gonna be the cost of favor to play one of these cards. Over here, I have a whole bunch of enums. I'm a fanatic of enums. I put them all over the place because it helps me make sure my data is correct and I'm not just using um, hard-coded strings. They're actually gonna be enum values, which I can reference and check. The only other weird thing, so your data is gonna look completely different than mine. The only other thing I will recommend is putting in an ID here, which will help us a lot when we get to the JSON file to be able to just see, oh, number 13 was causing me an issue. Let me go look at line 13 and see why that was causing an issue. Uh, and you can go from there. I don't take sponsorships on this channel because I just wanna make good videos that are educational and sharing my game development journey because I want to be a game developer who makes YouTube videos, not a YouTuber who makes games. So if you wanna support this channel further, the best way to do it would be to go check out my new upcoming game, Hexagod. It's currently in the demo phase and it is a super fun game. But I'll go right back into the content here. I'd appreciate it if you check it out. Leave some feedback for me down below in the comments or over in the Discord. Ooh, that, that feedback is what I want right now. So let's dive right back in. So now we're gonna go ahead and once you get your sheet created, we're gonna download this into JSON. And the astute Google Sheets viewer uh, user might go here and say, you can't download as JSON. You could download as CSV, but one of the issues with CSV is the column ordering is gonna matter. And so if you ever move stuff around in your sheet, it's gonna mess up your, your data. You're gonna have to go back and adjust the mapping between the column and then the data you pull out. Where with JSON, you get a, you get a key value pair like a dictionary and you can say, get me the sacrifice favor and it doesn't matter if sacrifice favor is here or if it's down at the bottom of the list. And that makes it a really nice and flexible um, kind of uh, um, idiot proof thing for myself to make sure I'm pulling out the right data accordingly. So how do you actually export a, uh, a sheet like this? And that is you can have extensions in Google Sheets. I know. I just learned that recently as well. You can extend the functionality of Google Sheets and specifically there'll be a link below to this one. I want you to install the export sheet data. I don't know who made this. I don't know the safety of it. If your data is special to you, you might want to do a bit of review. I, I've had a good time with it. I don't I can't speak to the legitimacy of the extension or if there's security risk or stuff like that. So. That's my, it's, it's my disclaimer. Don't blame Aramis if, if something funky happens. Um, but I, I installed this here and then you can go to extensions and you can come down to ex, uh, export sheet data and open sidebar. Now over in the sidebar, let me move my face over so you can see stuff. Oh, now we're over here. You can see over here what we're talking about. So we have this nice little uh, format here. And I think most of the default values are set up, but I'll slowly scroll through in case you want to um, change anything. Um, that's about it. There's not, nothing too crazy here that I've changed. Um, the one thing that I have messed with over the, uh, over the course of this is either doing all sheets or just the current sheet. So you could either export 
um, just your current sheet and it's gonna not have the word cards here and you're gonna just be able to access it straight up or you can export the whole thing. I'm doing the whole thing since I want all of this data nicely inside of here and you'll simply come down once you have the settings set up and you can, you can export it a few times to see what it looks like, but you can export it and it'll start compiling the sheet as uh, as JSON data and look at that boom in 1.1 sec one, 1 1.1 seconds it downloaded it uh, and now you click download and it'll download it into your download file. Um, one of the interesting things you'll have to do here is rename this or delete your previous one here. So in this case, I can delete the old version and I can go and edit this one so the naming convention is correct. And if you open this with Notepad, we can go ahead and see what the data actually looks like. So again, this is a, um, it's a key value pair. In this situation, we have the card as the first value and then a big long dictionary and that ID here is gonna be the reference to each of these. So you have ID zero is gonna be look like that's the shrine reward card and shows you all the information about that. If you scroll down a bit further in my example here, I then have the buildings sheet with another dictionary full of all that data. Oops, don't wanna change that. And finally, uh, we have the last piece of data here, which is going to be my subtile bonus data as well. Again, um, just a list of all of those. So each of those are gonna have unique IDs inside of them, which is gonna be very helpful. So then when you go inside of Godot, I like to create a data folder that's gonna specifically hold that JSON and you can click and drag that over into the data folder. This is why renaming it is helpful so that you can like delete the old one and pull the new one in because the way I've loaded this in, is I have a utility script which has a reference to where that uh, JSON path is located and I want this to just be always pointed to the right piece of data so I need to make sure the naming convention is correctly. You could expand this to say look in data and grab the most recent sheet or um, if you just look into data and pull whatever file is in there. I'm a silly monkey. I go with the simplest solution and having a hard-coded string right here is pretty simple. Now that we have our JSON data, it's part of Godot, we have a reference to the path, it's time to actually load that data when the project runs. And that's where this load JSON data from path comes in, which takes in that path. And then we can call file access .get file as string passing in that path. I have a variable defined for JSON, just a null check to see was this successful or not. If it's not successful, we throw out an error. Otherwise we parse that calling json.parse string passing in that file string. That should then give us a big dictionary full of all of our data, but if it's still null at that point, I throw another error saying, hey, error missed something weird happened here. Go check out the error code. And then at this point, we simply return that JSON data at the very end of that. So you can call that method from wherever you want to do it. I'm going to go over to my card manager, which is a, uh, a resource script, which is supposed to load in that card data. So on an init function, or it could be on ready, or it could be on something else, some other trigger that you want to load this in. I load up that JSON data calling that method we just talked about. See if that data is actually set. So if it's not null, then we'll go ahead and grab out the card sub dictionary from here. Because remember, I exported all of my sheets, so I have a bunch of sub dictionaries inside of my JSON, my JSON data. So I need to pull out that card data. And again, this is where the IDs are going to come in helpful now, because now we're going to go from I from uh, zero to the size of the data. We're going to start pulling out. Oops, excuse me. We're going to we're gonna start pulling out the card data based off that index. And so because these are strings, we need to make sure inside of our code that we're passing in a string of that value. So once we go down into our parse card data from JSON, we take in an ID and then another dictionary, which is gonna be specifically the data we care about. So in this situation, we're pulling out zero as a string here, and we're getting a dictionary full of the card data for ID zero, in this case, that is gonna be shrine rewards. From there, I can define my data class. So I have card data as my data script here, and that is going to then be able to start populating the values accordingly. If you're using a bunch of enums, which I am, I can then start parsing out the data by calling JSON, and it's a dictionary, so it's just like any other dictionary in Godot. You can say JSON data, and then the brackets, putting in then the, ID, the uh, string of the the value or the key you want to pull out in the situation. So we have card type and that'll pull out the card type here and give me shrine rewards. Then because I'm using an enum for my card types, which enums are great, you can go look at all the different enum values here and start defining your own enums. They're, they're, they're chef's kiss, wonderful. You can then use call the enum.get, which will ensure that that enum value is part of your code. So this would throw an error if you 
um, fat fingered in enum value in your data or something like that. You can also start entering um, some, some logic here to do data correction to say, I'm looking for specific things like this. Uh, or if you're doing a, say an int or a float, you can cast the value from your JSON data as such. So you can start expanding on top of this. This is the bare bones of how I'd pull in data. At the very end, a lot of the times I will just return this out and slap it into a dictionary using an enum for the key and then the value gonna be the card type. So in this situation, I believe for cards, I have my card type as the key for everything. And then that would be a reference to this structured data of this card data I've defined, which is gonna be um, parsed in information like so. This is just one way to manage your data, and I hope this was helpful for you. If you have questions, leave them below. Come join the Discord and ask questions. People will be more than happy to help you, or come stop by the live stream and we can hang out. And I'd love to dive in deeper to show you and answer your questions kind of with a live demo of how this all works together. I have been Aramis. Go wishlist Hexagod over on Steam. It'll help support this channel so I can make more great videos for you at this point. Um, I've been Aramis. Bye-bye. Have a good day. You're better at this than you think. Go make games. Do it.